The polar vortex, that semi-permanent feature in the atmosphere as you get toward the North Pole, is spinning away, and we're watching a lot of that cold air over into Russia. However, there are some changes. You're starting to see this blocking pattern set up across Greenland where you start to push some warm air up across the Arctic region, and that begins to disrupt the cold. And the first thing it's going to do is push some pretty cold air down into Europe. I'm going to flip maps here. Let's go over to this. This is a look at the tropopause temperature. That's right at the top of the atmosphere. And this is a good way to look at how fluid everything is moving. And one thing that we start to see is this big ridge that starts to develop right here across Greenland. That Greenland block sends the cold into Europe. Okay, this is important because now that we're, I guess, flexing the polar vortex, if you will, maybe stretching some of it down into North America, I think that means some colder temperatures for parts of the east. It may take a little while, but we're looking long range down to around the 4th, 5th, and 6th. I think this could be significant all the way into the southeast. However, not significant across the far southwest. I was looking at one of the forecast discussions or one of the pages out of the National Weather Service. It might have been El Paso talking about how it's been a La Nina year and it's been very typical of that above average temperatures. I think that's going to continue across the far southwest. If you look at some of the products coming out from the National Weather Service, a lot of talk of this warmth continuing across a lot of the south and the west, especially Texas, back into Arizona and New Mexico. It's also going to be warm today, as a matter of fact, across these areas, also into the southeast, all the way up toward the Great Lakes, out ahead of this next area of low pressure that starts to move east on Sunday. We'll see some snow today. We'll talk about that in a little more detail in a moment. But this is the signs of our next storm that's gathering energy, starting to dig a little bit in the upper levels. You can see that trough digging across parts of Montana, bringing some light snow here, also South Dakota into North Dakota, and even some rare snow for the year across Colorado. One of the driest snow years that we've seen, I don't know, maybe on record, uh, into the Rockies here, into Colorado. Just some grim pictures coming out of the ski resorts here. There is a little bit of snow on the way. It'll pretty things up maybe, but it's not going to be a lot of base building type snow uh, for that snowpack. Low pressure developing as we head into Sunday. It starts to deepen and it continues to do so as it moves right toward the Great Lakes. On the backside of this, Arctic high pressure building in a true Arctic air mass. Temperatures will drop really quickly. And we're also going to see a lot of wind. So windblown snow likely. We're already seeing winter storm watches out now for a good part of Wisconsin and some other states up into the upper Midwest. Weather.gov is where you want to look to see if you're under anything and follow it because warnings will likely come out with this, especially as strong as it's looking. Either way, it's going to be one heck of a wind maker. By the time we get now into Sunday evening, low pressure setting just to the east of Chicago, a cold front will be draped to the south. It's moving through Texas with this. Some much colder temperatures dropping into the plains. Out ahead of it, warm southwest flow. Maybe some overrunning moisture. And this could be an ice problem for parts of Ontario. I think the best ice chances will be north of Toronto. And it could be significant up here uh, toward Montreal. Into the far northeastern United States. Maine may actually, northern Maine may stay all snow. And then we turn really cold behind this and the snow starts to pick up much quieter across the west at this point. Once we get towards, say, Sunday into Monday, a decent ridge building. Look at this jet stream flow. All right, this has been the winter so far, right? Big ridge across the west. Cyclonic flow in the east with colder temperatures. And that's where we're headed. Temperatures on the way back down. And then we're going to turn cold all the way to Florida with this front as it passes through Key West. So big temperature changes, maybe back to average, slightly below average in the east. Big changes across the west. Some of you say we haven't really changed much. It's going to get even warmer. And then we start to see some moisture move back into the southwest. Let's move this forward in time. Again, I don't know that I believe anything, but remember how I showed you that weather pattern that starts to shift up just a little bit as we head into sometime around the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of January, right here. So we begin to see that polar vortex get disrupted by a decent ridge across Greenland, and we pull that cold air down into North America. I think at this point, someone asked in the chat the other day, or maybe it was in the comments, when are we going to start to see these big storms that roar out of the Gulf up the East Coast? I, ha I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you, this is the kind of pattern that you want to see before you 
start to see the, these types of storms. The European last night tried to print something going on here into the northeast. This just looks all weird. I'm not looking at any particular storm now. We're looking at patterns. And we also have another one trying to form. Notice the flow, right? It's out of, out of the southwest. We're not dealing with this type of flow out of the northwest. It's going to be cold. It will be reinforced by these shots of chilly air, but a little bit different looking than what we saw in December. This is the GFS just for some comparison. Again, this is going to be a significant storm up into Wisconsin. The UP of Michigan, southern parts of Canada, a big wind maker. I'm telling you what, pretty much everywhere, you're going to see a tremendous amount of wind with this. Even some snow back into West Texas and El Paso as we get, it's going to be pretty tough to get the snow into El Paso. It's probably going to be more of a rain-snow mix. The GFS has been kind of weird with that all along, but let's continue this out in time. The GFS starts to see this swooping nature, if you will, of what's happening here with the storm path. More to come. I'm not a buyer yet, but we're definitely shopping. Across the West, quieter in California. I was looking at some of the winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings, flood warnings, all of those things. Much better looking here now as we start to see some recovery take place through Monday and Tuesday. There's that moisture across the Southwest. Maybe a little bit of rain and snow here into the highest elevations of Arizona and New Mexico. Otherwise, quiet across the Rockies. The next storm starts to aim at the Pacific Northwest now as we head into next Friday. So we're talking about the second. Otherwise, look how quiet it is in Washington and Oregon all the way through next week. Just a little bit of snow up into Canada, but even this is questionable. You know, we're talking about almost a week away. So let's see how all this works out. And then the moisture tries to come back into California and the West Coast heading into next Sunday. Here's a look at your snow totals through the next couple of days. A couple of inches here into the Wasatch, into the Colorado Rockies, up into Wyoming, into the mountains. The valley's not seeing very much at all. Clearly not a big snowstorm on the way for the west. Even up into Canada, most of the snow pushed pretty far to the north. A little bit falling, though, here into the Rockies and into the coastal ranges of British Columbia. It'll be pretty heavy, well north of Vancouver here. I mean, pretty far north, too, uh, with that snow. Temperatures across this region... Relatively warm. There is going to be a cool down on the way, though. Temperatures dropping into the mountains, down into the teens and single digits below zero in the highest elevations at night. We start to warm up slightly, though, as we head into Tuesday. Look at this, guys. I want to show you by next Thursday. We could see highs into the 50s here in the eastern Montana, pushing above freezing all the way up to Edmonton. Really warm weather here. A little bit of light snow moving across Saskatchewan and the prairies here of Manitoba. This back here is the energy that's going to create our winter storm as we get close to Wisconsin and Minnesota. That energy is going to bring some lighter snow, though, across, again, Wyoming, uh, South Dakota, maybe even Nebraska. We could switch over to a little bit of snow here in the North Kansas, too. We'll go south of that in just a second. But as this cold pool of air right here, it is this upper low. That's a cold pocket of air in the mid levels and the upper levels starts to move through. You're going to see surface low pressure develop way out on the front side of it. Not really good angle here, but you can see the edge of it. Otherwise, this region starts to feel the influence of that ridge building back across the northern Rockies. Here's your snow. Again, highest where your low pressure starts to develop with lighter amounts up across Canada. There could be a burst of snow here somewhere as this low moves by. It'll be interesting to see if we actually get that much snow. I don't know. More to come. All right. Across the southern plains, the central plains, all the way uh, even into parts of the south here, we're pretty warm. Colder weather, though, on the way as advertised. There's that surface low developing ahead of this trough, and there's that upper low I just drew. The best lift and dynamics with this storm for snow will be back into this region. Out ahead of this, we're going to see a lot of rain. And uh, with your warm front draped like this, temperatures below that warm front are going to get pretty warm. But on the northern side, there could be some sleet, freezing rain, especially up into the UP. And then we'll go probably over to snow when things end behind this rain to maybe some snow into Chicago. Not a lot here, I don't think. Looks like, again, well to your north is the sweet spot for the snow. And uh, this is the European trying to pick up on that upslope flow into parts of Texas with a little bit of snow. I'm going to slow this back down, too, because as this front moves through, we're going to see some snow develop here in the parts of Colorado. This is not a lot of snow whatsoever, but there could be some. Rain all the way to the Gulf Coast. The front moves through. Temperatures drop back below average. We're way above average for now. These will be your highs, or at least close to it today, up into the uh, the 70s and 80s. 
Look at the 60s and 50s, how far north they spread, all the way up into Iowa. And then as we get into Sunday, there comes the front. There comes the change. Waking up Sunday morning, or Monday morning, rather. Temperatures dropping into Houston. We'll probably be stuck in the 50s, and you can see how that cold drops into the Great Lakes, too, behind this low. Temperatures near or below zero in a few areas. You can see the white starting to show up. And then once we get into next week, these temperatures start to rebound back up into the 60s across the southern plains into Texas. Warmer weather, even into the deep south, as the cold persists further to the north. Let's head east. Some showers possible today across the deep south. It doesn't look like certainly a, a, a rain out, but a little bit of cloud cover. Otherwise, mild for this time of year. Colder than average across the northeast. We're clearing out, though, and we're going to cloud back up ahead of this next system. Clouds start to thicken, and we'll see some rain start to develop as far north as Detroit. Now we're dealing with some ice into the northeast, into southern Ontario. Here comes the cold front moving through. Rain chances going up across west Tennessee, west Kentucky, into the deep south. It's going to start to get windy, too. Out ahead of this, strong southerly winds will warm temperatures up across the Virginias and, and, Carol, and the Carolinas, down into Georgia, way above average. Once this moves through, temperatures start to drop. Watch the ice into New England. Watch the snow again back to the west, and then we turn cold. And the lake effect will kick in behind this, and it could be significant. It's not going to be record-breaking, but there's going to be some lake effect snow around. It's going to be much colder and windier. And the snowmaking returns to the ski resorts in the east as we get chilly. Across the south, it's also going to get cold, too. Colder as we push that chilly air all the way down into Florida. If you can get the right fetch without moving that air across parts of the Atlantic, you can move it right down the peninsula. It could get pretty chilly down into Florida with this type of setup. And now we're staying pretty cold, at least across the northern tier, heading into the new year. New Year's Eve, what are we looking like? Well, I, you know, this is an interesting look. Another disturbance tries to move in from the northwest, putting some snow here into the Ohio Valley, parts of Pennsylvania, into the northeast. No snow for the deep south with this type of setup. Beyond this, I think you start to watch again. If you get something this amplified this far south, look out. One run of the European. Not buying it yet. And again, I'm not buying where this storm's going to be on January 6th, here we set on December 27th, but you, you saw the upper pattern. It, I would argue that it probably was going to support it, so more to come on that. Let's move along, Let's talk about the ice. Could be a big problem. Uh, a quarter of an inch, maybe. I don't know if we're going to see half an inch of freezing rain across parts of southern Ontario and also into Quebec, but there's going to be some freezing rain here, no doubt about that, also into the parts of the northeastern United States and even back up across Minnesota. Can be a little bit of freezing rain here too, and into Michigan. Snow amounts are going to be more significant further to the north. Closer look at that ice here into the northeast, especially into Vermont, New Hampshire. That will be the most impactful. And here comes your snow into Wisconsin. This is a look at the national blended data. So we're blending a several models to get this a good swath of more than six inches of snow across eastern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin. Those totals drop as you get down towards the Illinois border. And into Michigan, some snow here as well. I'm going to back this up because a lot of this is not lake effect, okay? This is synoptic snow with that area of low pressure swinging by. So six plus inches. Uh, look at this, the blended data trying to show more than a foot of snow out here on the UP where we've just been hammered with snow. And then up into Canada, somebody's going to get more than a foot of snow, it looks like, especially as that low really gets cranked and wrapped up. Here's a look at your temperatures today. Warm from Roanoke down to Raleigh, Columbia, South Carolina. The south is mild, cold into the northeast, and everywhere in between. <laughs> it's going to be sort of that battle zone uh, with temperatures pretty close to average, if not maybe a little bit above average, depending on where you are. Warmth spreads north out ahead of the cold front, and it's going to get really warm too here in the eastern Missouri, all the way up in Indiana, and then here comes the cold behind it. We're down into the 20s as we get into Monday morning. Teens, lower teens, and single digits across Iowa. That cold pushes all the way down into Mississippi, Alabama. You can see the cold front moving through. 
You're back to reality. Boy, it feels like spring, but temperatures down into the 20s on Tuesday morning. Highs barely getting into the 30s in the northern parts of these states. Even Florida getting in on the cold. Orlando down into the 50s for highs. Overnight lows. Look at this. I'm telling you, if we can get that air to fetch right down the peninsula with no ocean influence, it could get pretty cold even down to Orlando near freezing. Okay, this would be heading into Wednesday. And then we start to see at least a brief warm-up. The air starts to modify as we see a modified air mass. Someone said, don't you mean moderate or modify? No, the air, it does. It modifies underneath the sunshine and no snowpack. So the polar air mass warms up. And now we're turning cold again into the northeast and into the upper Midwest. This doesn't change. I just think it's cold with this type of setup. Stay tuned. More to come. Subscribe. Come back. If you're a casual viewer, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Support the channel. Thanks to the thousands of you over the last couple of weeks who've joined. Appreciate your support. Have a great Saturday. See you next time.